Your instructor has already provisioned a CloudFormation template in the account given to you to execute these labs. And that has created a virtual private cloud with the CIDR block 10.0.0.0/16, which we call the DevOps VPC. The DevOps VPC has two subnet, pub1 and pub2, in two availability zones with the given CIDR blocks. We have also created a route table that allows you to route traffic to the internet through an internet gateway so that you can connect into some of the EC2 instance that we are soon going to spin up in these subnets. The route table also allows any traffic to flow between these two subnets. So this environment, this network configuration is already provisioned in your lab environment when you log into your AWS console. What we are going to do next is to spin up two EC2 instances. The first one being the div machine with the IP address 10.0.1.20. It's very important to note this down because you are going to start this machine with this IP address. And this machine we are going to spin up with uh, already pre-built image that we have shared with you in your account that has uh, Visual Studio code installed. It also has Azure DevOps Server Express. And Azure DevOps Server Express use SQL Server Express, which is already installed in this machine as it's uh, back in storage. And also you will find some useful tools like Notepad++ installed on this new machine. The Azure DevOps server in this Dew machine comes with a pre-configured set of projects that we are going to explore in the labs in this uh, exercise. Then we are going to start another machine called Build Machine with the IP address 10.0.2.30. And this Build Machine has .NET Core SDK already installed. And it also has Azure DevOps server agent set up so that uh, the Azure DevOps server in Dew machine already comes with a built agent configured. So let's go and then start these two EC2 instance in these subnets. So I have logged into my AWS console. Make sure that you are in the correct region. So the first thing is we are going to start is the Dew machine. So go to your EC2 section of the console and uh, go to instances and click launch instance. So if you go into my Amazon machine image, your instructor has already shared a machine image with you. So you need to select this shared with me option. It's very important that you select the shared with me option and then select the DevOps Dew machine. The Amazon machine image ID may be different for you. And also time to time when we publish a new version of this, there will be a dash, something like V1, V2, V3 to identify different versions. But select the one with the DevOps Dew machine in its name prefix. For the development machine, we are going to select the T2 large instance. Depending on the configuration that you have in your environment, uh, if you have permissions to execute T2 large instance, you will be successfully uh, start this instance. Uh, but if you select a different instance type, make sure that you have the permission to start that large instances. So we are going to start a T2 large instance. And the VPC has to be this DevOps VPC. So the ignore the uh, ID at the end. It comes as part of the cloud formation provisioning. But you need to select this DevOps VPC. Select the uh, availability zone one, the pub one for this. You need to have a public IP address, so make it enabled. IAM role, you need to select Dew machine role, this one, DevOps Dew machine role. So later we are going to attach some permissions into this so that we can uh, invoke certain AWS services. So make sure that you select DevOps Dew machine role for this IAM role. So everything looks good. 
For the IP address, you need to specify a fixed address, 0, 1, uh, 20. So you need to use this IP address because the build machine is configured to identify the development machine with this IP address. Click Add Storage. Keep it in the default 80. You don't need to add tags. Configure security groups. Select existing security groups and then select this DevOps Dew Machine security group that allows you to RDP into this instance. Review and launch. Everything looks good. Click launch. You don't need to uh, use an existing key pair. The username and the password to log in into this instance is given in your lab document. So this instance image comes with already username and password configured. Launch the instance. So we are in good shape. So this is the due machine. So let's call it due machine. We will start the build machine now. Again, click launch instance. Select my Amazon machine image. Select shared with me. And when you select shared with me, you will find a mother image called DevOps build machine. So this has uh, Azure DevOps server agent already installed. Select that. For this one, you are going to use a T2 medium instance. Configure the instance details. We are going to start it in the DevOps VPC in availability zone two called pub two. Uh, auto assign IP address, we are going to remote login into that. So say it yes. IAM role has to be build machine, DevOps build machine role. The IP address you can define as 10.0.2.30. Click and storage, 80 is good amount. Go to security groups, click next. Select an existing security group. You need to select this build machine security group. Click review and launch. Launch the instance. You don't need to have a uh, key pair to log in. So proceed without a key pair and acknowledge that you know that launch the instance. So this is my uh, build agent. So call it build machine. So what I'm doing here is that I'm uh, simulating your development environment with this new machine and the build machine, uh, build agent with this build machine. After a few moment, both new machine and build machine have started. You can find the status checks is in green. So let's log in into new machine. So right click it, click connect, uh, download the remote desktop file, open it, connect, and you need to connect with the username and password given for this due machine. I already copied this uh, username and password to my clipboard, so let's type the due user, that's my username, and the password. Click OK. Accept the certificate. So you now log in into the development machine. If you open your browser inside this development machine, the Azure DevOps service is already installed here. And if you type HTTPS, this needs to be HTTPS, and the name of the machine, which is Dew, we'll get the Azure DevOps server already running. So you are in good condition. You already have a few projects that we are going to explore in the sub in the coming labs. But for the moment, uh, your Azure DevOps server is running. So if you go into the admin center, admin settings, and look at the agent pools, you can find that there is a AWS build pool already configured. Your build agent, which is running on the build machine, may be green but it doesn't necessarily mean that it has the proper connectivity. So let's log in into the build machine and then check whether this build agent can actually connect into this, uh, the Azure DevOps server. So select your build machine and then connect into that. 
download the remote desktop connection like before click it connect uh, type the name of the user so in this case it's build user so this username and password is given in your lab document so in this case I'm going to type the password click OK and then login into my build machine so I'm connected into my build machine I'm going to show you some of the configurations that we have done here so that you know how we have done the wiring so if you go to the CMD or the command prompt and then type ping div you can find that this build machine identifies the domain uh, or so the machine div configured to run on this IP address 10.0.1.20 which is the same IP address that I have given for my div machine when I started it so if you look at this div machine you can find the IP address of that one is 10.0.1.20 so the IP address get resolved correctly uh, and the way we have done it was through the host file so if you go into C Windows system 32 drivers etc etc and then open this host file uh, something like in notepad plus plus I have added this entry saying that the name due correspondent to this IP address the reason we have done it in this way instead of setting it up in a DNS server is that it's easy to set up especially uh, when we configure these environments for thousands of servers thousands of students uh, it's easy and also we don't have any active directory environment or complex DNS configurations in place so the IP address is all works fine if you open your browser and then type HTTPS Dew, which is our development server where the Azure DevOps server is configured and then press enter you will be prompted to enter the username and password so the username for that is the username or the local username that we have configured for this development machine or the Dew machine so that's Dew user password is also given in your lab document so these entries are given in your lab document it's the same username and the password we use to log in or RDP into a remote login into our Dew machine. So click sign in. So I have connected successfully to my uh, Azure DevOps server from my build machine. And if you look at the certificate here, it's a self valid certificate. But if you go inside that, you'll find that it's a self signed certificate. So how does this becomes a valid certificate? Why you didn't get an error when you uh, when you are using a self signed certificate that is signed by the development machine? The reason being, if you go into your certificate store, we have already installed this development uh, self signed certificate as a trusted root certificate, and that's why you don't get any errors. So far. Uh, your build machine can resolve the development machine and there's no any certification errors when you try to uh, browse to that uh, Azure DevOps server. So you are in good shape now. 